Hello, my name is Dr. Annette Murgaton, Director of the St. Clair County Health Department. I'm here today to talk to you about vaccines or immunizations. Before vaccines, countless people suffered and died from diseases that we now find uncommon. Diseases like whooping cough, measles, pneumococcal disease, and influenza. Decades of research and development have made vaccines safer and better than ever. But with the exception of smallpox, all of these diseases are still with us. Other diseases like whooping cough or pertussis are on the rise. And the immunity from a vaccine to whooping cough also goes down or wanes after time and booster shots are needed. We want to share with you the importance of getting your vaccines so that unfortunate situations like this become a thing of the past. Colin was born first. Mm -hmm. He was born at two pounds, two ounces, mm -hmm. and Corbin was second, weighing one pound, 15 ounces. Colin actually was only on oxygen for a little while. Mm -hmm. He did wonderful. He thrived and just every medical milestone he went above and beyond and met their expectations right on time and Corbin was um, they always say there's a weaker twin mm -hmm. and Corbin was our weaker twin interesting he got a staph infection and broke out in these nodules and they thought he had an immune deficiency mm -hmm. but um, he, he still did very well on top of everything he's my little fighter Colin came home January 4th, mm -hmm. and Corbin came home January 9th. When they came home, they were very, they were very healthy. Mm -hmm. He all of a sudden had um, a rattly chest. Mm -hmm. He was kind of, not wheezing, but he did have a little bit of a rattle, and he started to have a mild cough. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, um, it progressively got a little bit worse. By Monday, I took him to the doctor. He said it was just some bronchi bronchiolosis, mm -hmm. and it should just take a little bit time, but he would, you know, be okay. Mm -hmm. By Tuesday, he was coughing so hard, he was not holding any food down. Okay. I would, he was hungry. I, he wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. I, he just would eat, and then he would cough, 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 and vomit. He just was not able to keep anything down. So I took him Wednesday. Mm -hmm. and Back you know, to the same doctor? Yeah. Okay. I explained, you know, what was going on. He's caught, this cough is terrible. He's, you know, he's not, almost not able to catch his breath. Mm -hmm. He was coughing, you know, vomiting. And he suggested giving him some Pedialyte. And he also gave him a nebulizer treatment in office. Mm -hmm and sent us home with some treatments also. They were somewhat working, but he was really coughing really hard, really rattly chest, almost wheezing, um, and he was just not really keeping anything down as far okay. as food. I was afraid he wasn't getting his nutrition. Just to watch him be so tired, and you know, he was really sick, okay. really sick. I remember one time in particular, he was on his, I was changing his diaper. Mm -hmm. And um, he just, I, I could see his chest, and it wasn't moving. Mm -hmm. He then just started to cry, and he was all blue in the mouth. I just held him. I didn't, you know, I didn't know if I was seeing things, if I was, I didn't really know what was going on. I called the doctor immediately, and I told him he was turning color. He would cough, 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 and the cough would just continue and continue, and he would not know when to catch his breath. <laughs> and then he would turn blue or you know whatever it was but whenever he cried he was all blue in the mouth Dan called me and was pretty hysterical he, that's when he told me he quit breathing EMS had just gotten there okay. and they they had to do six sets of CPR and he just kept telling me can you hear him he's okay you know I could hear him kind of crying in the background so they had pretty much saved him at that point 
we went to Children's. Children's came and picked them up, and uh, we were there, and uh, they were almost certain it was RSV. They did all their all their cultures, and you know, made sure they wanted to make sure that he, you know, they were treating an infection, or uh, they didn't know if it was a virus or anything like that. But when we got there, they said that, you know, he was he he seemed like he was going to be fine. Their object was just to get him comfortable enough to heal, and let him concentrate on, you know, concentrate on um, fighting the infection, okay. whatever it was. I could tell he was just not comfortable. He was thrashing his head around and turning all red. Um, I asked him to give him a little bit more morphine to kind of make him comfortable because that's what their objective is. Right. I left around 10 o'clock and they started the call around 4. Told, told us that he didn't make it through the night. You know, they did the autopsy report. Um, it came back inclusive. Hi, I'm Dr. Pasha. I'm a pediatrician, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about pertussis, otherwise um, known as whooping cough. Infants are at the high, highest risk for getting very ill from pertussis. At adults and adolescents actually get pertussis more commonly, um, but it often goes unrecognized until um, a more susceptible individual, such as a, a young infant, is exposed and contracts uh, the illness. Pertussis is very difficult to diagnose in the early stages of disease, as are many vaccine-preventable illnesses. And um, with pertussis, once the infant shows the more classic signs of the whooping cough and pertussis is considered, uh, antibiotic treatment does very little to alter the, the natural course of the illness and the illness just progresses. Justine's doctor may have never seen pertussis or may not have seen it in a long time and it's very frustrating and helpless position to be in as a doctor and as a parent when your child contracts a vaccine preventable illness um, that you can do very little about. That immunization really is the first line of defense against pertussis and against really all of our vaccine preventable illnesses. Two days after the funeral, Corbin started coming down with exactly the same symptoms. It was the, it was the rattly chest and the cough. It took one week for, from beginning to end for Colin. Mm -hmm. And with Corbin, we knew we didn't have much time. I took him to a different doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, and he prescribed just a, a amoxicillin, an antibiotic. And he went, we went one, one more day, and he's, I still wasn't comfortable. I said, what if it's not strong enough? What if, you know, I just ran all these, I can't, I can't watch another baby die. So um, I called Children's in ICU where Colin was, mm -hmm. and um, they had said, bring him down immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to treat him or, you know, just for a day of evaluation if that's what he needs. Mm -hmm. um, we, we took him to Children's, got in right away, and he was in ER. Um, he then was, he had apnea that night. They admitted him the next day. We stayed the night in ER, and they admitted him the next day, and um, they did the nasal swab, which is what they check for pertussis. Mm -hmm. And um, five days later, it came back positive. So it's been almost eight, eight, ten weeks, and he's still experiencing some minor symptoms. Mm -hmm. There's the medical advancements out there that help, you know, people from not getting these diseases. We need to take advantage of them so these things do not happen again. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's just gone because they don't hear about it anymore. But in infants like mine, they're so susceptible to anything, mm -hmm. and the germs are still there. We as individuals just have become better at fighting them. Thank God for vaccinations. And The important part to realize here is that Justine did everything right. Justine's babies got their first set of shots. They were just too young to have completed their series. Some people can't get all their vaccines. 
for various reasons. And this is why it's so important for the community to have a high level of immunization. The more people that are vaccinated, the less these germs can spread. This is called herd immunity or cocooning. And it's a very important part of the strategy to combat vaccine preventable diseases. It is our responsibility as a community to be vaccinated. If not for you, for them. <laughs>